Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for tuning in. Brian here, and welcome to my last list of this year. It's probably the new year already when this is uploaded, though, so whatever. But this is my top 20 movies of 2016. Um, This was a list that was going on and on, and I didn't know how many I wanted to do. And, you know, once again, I haven't seen every movie. There are four, actually, in particular I wanted to shout out in terms of me either not being able to see them, haven't gotten around to seeing them, or they're not out yet where I am. And those are Hunt for the Wilder People, Goat, 13th, and Silence, which is the Scorsese movie. That's the one that's not open, open yet here. But other than that... Um, yeah, these are my top 20 movies of the year. Once again, as always, it's a very diverse list <clears throat> of a lot of different things. So if you have a different list, put it in the comments below. And yeah, let's get started. So at number 20, we got American Honey. Um, I kind of left this on the list. I, at number 20 for The Ambition, I would have loved it if it was a little bit shorter, but it still stuck with me. So that's saying a lot. And again, A24, they always... Bring me something. Number 19, The Edge of 17. Um, a really daring sort of coming-of-age movie. Um, <clears throat> lots of different elements in it. Not a lot of stereotypes. I think it was very raw and honest. Haley Steinfeld was fantastic in the film. And it was a very different sort of take on the coming-of-age movie. Number 18, we got Finding Dory. Loved all the characters, loved the voice acting, loved the animation, loved the emotion, and yeah, that's really all I can say, so <laughs> good job, Pixar. 17 is The Invitation, great thriller, creepy, eerie, has a great build to it, and I think it has a lot of nice payoffs, and it's very tense and chilling. <clears throat> Number 16, we got the new Shane Black movie, The Nice Guys. Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe were so perfect together. Man, this movie is so hilarious, so action-packed, so much fun, and so exhilarating. And yeah, I really, really loved it. Number 15, we got Moana. Um, classic Disney, at its best. At its absolute best. Love the music, love the colors, the rock is great. I really feel like an asshole for not knowing the actress that played Moana, but she was great. And again, I think it's a classic Disney story, but it still was told in a very fun and beautiful way. So, good job. 14, we got Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Honestly, I went into this movie thinking I thought it'd be okay, but I came out of loving, I came out of it loving it, so that's saying a lot, and that's really all I have to say. I think the characters were great, I thought the action was great, and Star Wars, what else can you say? 13, we got the new Tom Ford movie, Nocturnal Animals. Uh, Amy Adams, Jake Gyllenhaal, Aaron Taylor, Johnson, Michael Shannon. God, everyone was so damn good in this movie. The way that Tom Ford merged all these stories together and just, you know, it's a film I still think about. It's a film that doesn't give you that many answers. You kind of have to figure it out for yourself. And again, this is no insult to the man, but coming from Tom Ford, it's very surprising that he's this type of filmmaker. So good job. Number 12 is Blue Jay, a great little indie written by Mark Duplass, starring Mark Duplass and Sarah Paulson. 80 minutes of pure emotion, joy, and just sweetness. They're terrific. Go check it out. 11, Captain America Civil War. I've never been more of a kid in a movie than this. Spider-Man and Black Panther sold it alone, but the rest of the movie was so great and... <sighs> Good job, Marvel. Good fucking job. But now in the top 10, number 10, we have the South Korean thriller, sexual thriller, The Handmaiden. Twists and turns everywhere. Acting was phenomenal. The tension was great. The build to everything was great. And I love the way this story kind of unfolded. And I think this would be a movie that I would love to see again. But please go into this not knowing that much because it's definitely worth the, the tenseness of it. Fantastic job. Number nine, we have Everybody Wants Some. This is literally Linklater at his best. Writing dialogue and having thin plot, not in a bad way, just three or three. I was going to say, I think it takes place over three days, but um, just this baseball team and sort of, you know, freshmen and sophomores and juniors and all this in high, or high school. Jeez. 
it is really late. Um, but in college and just everyone's so great in it. It's so great. And there's so many great characters. Glenn Powell for best supporting actor, or at least for our nomination, because he was fantastic. And number eight, we got a rival. Denis killed it again. Sicario was fantastic. Really liked the prisoners. Amy Adams once again, Jeremy Renner as well. And loved the way they did this sci-fi film. Johan Johansson did a great score once again, and just the emotion was fantastic. And it's it's a very beautiful movie. Number seven, we got Don't Think Twice. Fantastic comedy and also kind of coming of age drama about a group of improv comedians who sort of um Keegan Michael Key plays someone who goes to like an SNL style show and then it's sort of all the emotions through that. And again, I'm a sucker for these type of movies if they're done right. Um movies that are um done in a way that tell the story of these types of things or in the art and I think they pull it off very well. Everyone's great in it and it's 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 a very hard look at this type of life. So, well done. Number six is, once again, another A24 film, and the, probably, I believe, one of the final films from the late and great Anton Yelchin, and that is Green Room. Also, Patrick Stewart in one of the most creepiest but great roles of the year. Um, It's a a punk rock group who sees something happen in a neo-Nazi club, and it's their fight out of there, and it's intense, it's gory, but it's emotional in a lot of ways. There's a lot of great little moments that are so perfect, and... It's very realistic, too. Like, a lot of what the people do in this movie is very realistic to what I think real humans would have done. So I think that's another big plus to the movie. Number five, one of the songs from this was on my favorite songs, and it's the movie here as well, Sing Street. The most delightful movie I've seen all year. And I loved it when I saw it. I was so glad I saw it. Drive it like you stole it. I had to sing it, guys. I had to sing it. But... Please, if you have not seen it, go on Netflix and watch it. And, you know, I'm a sucker for these type of movies as well, but I think it was really well done and everyone was great. And again, the music was great too. Number four, we got Hell or High Water. Um, This weird kind of western-y style film was just fantastic. I thought everyone was great. Ben Foster and Chris Pine killed it. Jeff Bridges as well was fantastic. I think the plot was so interesting, though, because, you know, it makes sense. The The idea that these brothers are trying to sort of get this money and they have these really specific things of how they do it. And it's it's fantastic. And it again, it makes sense in a lot of ways. And it's sort of this kind of weird post-apocalyptic style film, too, at least with kind of the way the world's running in it. And I say if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's kind of, I think... This is probably the movie that was like the big highlight over the summer while the rest of the summer is kind of meh. Number three is probably the weirdest movie I've seen all year. Also A24, The Lobster. This was my number one for a while this year. I thought it was so weird, so innovative, but so kind of interesting. And I would love to rewatch it because the last time I saw it, I was in different circumstances. And to see it now would be interesting to see kind of my perspective on the whole thing. I think everyone was great. Colin Farrell, who's somebody I've never really liked, delivers an outstanding performance. And he would be somebody that I don't think would win it, but I would love to see him at least nominated for an Oscar because he does some very weird stuff. His humor and his subtleties in this are great. And a lot of the supporting cast in this film is fantastic as well, too, especially Rachel Rice and, um, you know, John C. Riley, and everyone's great. Number two, <sighs> number two was my number one for a while. I overhyped it a bunch. It's a movie that I think came in a year that we needed it, and I think it was a highlight because I don't think it was cliche or stereotype, at least I thought, but it was still beautiful. And to be honest, I think it is one of the, it is the best paced movie of the year. I think it was one of the it's the most brilliantly put together f- film of the year. But I think obviously one other film topped it. But my number two, excuse me, is Moonlight. A24 once again. This film was my most anticipated movie of the year. And it certainly lived up to the height. And it exceeded it. And I loved it. And it was beautiful and heart-wrenching. And there was, it was just phenomenal. And 
the acting was phenomenal as well. Um, please go see it, please. It's I think it's one of the more important movies this year. Number one, I'm going to say it right now, La La Land. I went into this movie with high expectations as well. Damien Chazelle did my second favorite movie of 2014, which was Whiplash, which was fantastic. And I heard great things about this movie, so I was going into it being hopeful. What is this movie going to be? Is it going to be as exciting as I thought? And hell yeah, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, they, it, they're they so fucking delightful. And the music's great, and I think the only slight flaw to this film is I wish, and I saw another review say it, is I wish there was at least one more song in it. But other than that, it's, it's again, I think it goes back to Don't Think Twice as well, where there's a lot about it that really tugs at my heartstrings. But here's the thing. If the movie's done well, then it's fine. And this movie does it very well. And I it says so much about the industry and your dreams and kind of being settled somewhere. And I loved it so much. I had such a great time, and I cannot wait to watch it again. So La La Land is my number one. So hip, hip, hooray. We made it and we're here. So what are some of your favorite movies of the year? Leave them in the comments below. This is my list. So obviously you might have different opinions. And hopefully I can catch up on some other movies and all that. So, But with that, this is the final list, everybody. And obviously for right now, I'm going to be quiet at least for a few days. I will have more videos and whatnot kind of explaining the new year and at least coming back coming back and you'll see my face and everything so that'll be i guess exciting so thank you guys so much and i know it's been a while but trust me it's gonna get better very soon so thank you for sticking it out with me so with that thank you so much for watching and thank you for tuning in and um yeah peace out guys